and welcome to my channel. My name is Martine and if you are new here, I do videos on Vedic astrology mainly, but also with some tropical astrology insights and I focus on both relationship and natal astrology. And if you like this video and you would like to see more content from me, please like, subscribe, hit the notifications bell to see when I will post a new video. Also, please comment in the comment section with anything that you would like to give as feedback for this video. And also, if you're interested in a personal consultation, I do consultations on a wide variety of topics. You can check out the video description. I will leave my contact information there. Thank you. And also, I have started a tarot channel more recently than this channel. And I'm also going to be linking that in the video description. In case you like tarot, you might want to go ahead and check it out. I would greatly appreciate it. Also, maybe consider subscribing if you are interested in tarot. Thank you. So, today's video is going to be about transits for 2023. And as I said, I am starting with Aries because that was the first sign that I extracted among my ruffles. So I'm going to start as usual with an introduction and this introduction is going to be the same for all of the videos in this series for 2023. So if you listen for it once then it will be the same for all of the videos in this series. So mainly I'm going to start by saying that as I did, as I also mentioned last year, you can use this video, these videos with predictions for 2023 for your moon sign as well as for your ascendant sign. You probably remember that I mentioned that you can take your moon sign as ascendant and look at the rest of your planets from your moon sign and that is called a Chandra Lagna chart. <laughs> meaning literally taking the moon as an ascendant and looking at the rest of the placements from the moon. And especially if the moon in your horoscope, in your natal chart, is in a lower degree than uh, the ascendant or the lagna, it might be particularly relevant for you to look at the moon chart as opposed to the lagna chart. Both of them are important, though. It's just that in certain situations, the... Chandra Lagna or the Moon Lagna can be more important when it comes to predictions. Okay, <clears throat> that's something that I wanted to say. Also, I have divided the year into three main parts, as usual, with respect to transits. Now, in the first roughly two weeks of 2023, the placements will be basically very much the same as they were in the end of 2022 or as they are going to be at the end of 2022. So if you want to see your predictions, you can just go back to my 2022 series and rewatch the chart three phase for the, um, you know, ascendant that you have or the moon sign that you have in my videos for 2022. I'm going to link the... Um, playlist for 2022 transits in this video description. So go ahead and watch that for the roughly two weeks, the first two weeks of 2023. So from January 1st until roughly January 14th, 2023, when Saturn is going to be in Capricorn. So the main divisions that I have looked at for 2023 are from roughly January 14th until April 19th, 2023, when Rahu is going to be in Aries, Jupiter is going to be in Pisces, Saturn is in Aquarius. The second chart is going to be when Rahu, from, sorry, from around April 19th until December 2nd, 2023, when Rahu is going to be in Aries, Jupiter is going to be in Aries, Saturn is going to be in Aquarius. And then the final um, section is going to be from December 2nd until the end of 2023, or roughly December 31st, 2023, when Rahu will be in Pisces, Jupiter in Aries, Saturn in Aquarius. So these are the three main sections that I will be looking at for all ascendants. 
And if you look at the chart, I have marked the planets. RA means Rahu, JU means Jupiter, SA means Saturn, KE means K2. And I will be marking the aspects for each of these with a different color. Yellow for Jupiter, red for Rahu or pink for Rahu, uh, gray for Saturn, and that's about it. Um, I haven't marked the K2 aspects because K2 is always opposite Rahu. Okay, <clears throat> so K2, just like Rahu and Jupiter, also aspects the 5th and the ninth houses from itself in addition to the house that it opposes. So this is just for you to know. But I haven't marked them, these aspects, K2's aspects on the chart, just to keep it, you know, simple. And uh, yeah, this is pretty much what I wanted to say as an introduction and now now i'm gonna get into the individual descriptions for the sign at hand so welcome taurus these are your predictions for 2023 and i will be reading them live so bear with me um and i mean i have looked over the charts a little bit but i'm mostly going to be reading live as in as i go along so, the chart one phase, which is from around January 14th until April 19th, 2023, the main influence is, in your case, the fact that, well, Saturn is going to be in the 10th, Jupiter is going to be in the 11th, and Rahu is going to be in the 12th, and all of these are equally important. Rahu being the co-ruler of the 10th house and falling in the 12th house shows that you could experience potential loss. I'm going to start with the bad news, basically, um, because the 12th house is the house of loss, basically. Best case scenario for some of you, this could be that you might have to travel on behalf of your job. You might have to travel... Um, because you're being sent by the company, or you could be getting a job in a foreign place. So this is good news for those of you who maybe are looking to go abroad via a job. Um, and it's also a good thing for people who are looking to retire this year. This is a great placement. You are going to be favored if you want to be re uh, retired this year. And it's also a good a placement for getting online jobs or jobs in any kind of a spiritual, creative field or any kind of a job that has to do with places of isolation, working in situations where you are maybe a little bit isolated, like working in research or working in a hospital or asylums of any kind or even prisons. If you're looking to work in or any kind of facilities like rehab centers, stuff like that, this is a good time to get work in these fields. But it's also a good time, like I said, if you are into any kind of a spiritual profession or if you are seeking to work in an esoteric field as well, even connected to astrology maybe. So yes, it is good for a multitude of things. What I can say is with Rahu in the 12th and also Saturn aspecting the 12th, um, I can see that there is a lot going on with your subconscious as well. So this is a good time to write down, maybe um, maybe write down your dreams or, you know, you might have particularly active dreams. And I have to say, this could be uh, restless sleeping a lot. So this could be a time when your dreams, your subconscious is sending you a lot of messages. This is a why it's a good idea to pay attention to what you're dreaming about. Um, all right. And then Jupiter in the 11th house shows that this is a great, actually a great placement for gains, especially since Jupiter also rules the 8th and 11th houses which uh, the 11th especially is the house of gains. So this is actually a year, a, a period, because it's not the full year, when you're going to be 
reaping the rewards of past investments, especially if you have made joint investments with your um, husband or wife, meaning your spouse, or with the family of your spouse, right? Maybe you have dealt, done some business with the family of origin of your romantic partner, especially if you are uh, married to your partner. This is going to be a great year to reap benefits from any investments like that. This is also going to be a great year for finances, so also for people who want to work in finances. But overall, Jupiter in the 11th means you are also going to become more popular. So this is going to help you in many ways. Obviously, this could help you at work. It can give you a lot of sustainability at work, like make you more popular uh, with the people around. And it can also mean um, more friendships. Of course, you becoming more sociable and more inclined to open up socially. And you could actually meet new people, like you could meet new friends during this time. So it's overall a really good placement. And then Jupiter also aspects the third house, which means that you're going to be actually quite self-indulgent during this time. So I don't think that you're going to, I mean, of course, bear in mind, I always mention this, that it depends a lot on what is happening in the individual chart because there could be placements that overpower what I'm talking about here. But just looking at these aspects, this could be a period when you really don't feel like trying that hard. You might become a little bit, you know, self-indulgent and, you know, you're going to be focused more on growing intellectually, maybe traveling, but not so much hard work, right? Um, so in some respect, it might make you, you know, a little bit sloppier than usual. And be careful that you don't get sidetracked when it comes to like your overall long term goals. That's that's all I wanted to say. With respect to the home base, there might be potential troubles with respect to the mother figure because you have Saturn and Rahu aspecting the fourth house. So uh, it, this could be multitude of, a multitude of things. This could be problems within the physical home, like, I don't know, a pipe is going to burst or something like that. Um, so you might have to fix things more than usual. This could also potentially show car problems or anything to do with a vehicle. So the way to avoid most potential problems connected to these things is to be at, take as many precautions as possible, right? Don't leave anything to chance because anything that Saturn touches, there will be obstacles there if you don't pay attention to everything that has to get done, right? So I don't know, if, you, if, if there's like a, a, a pending check that you need to do let's say with your bathroom pipes or like your electric panel or something like that in your home don't procrastinate on it because it will probably break down when you least expect it you know just some friendly friendly advice um there could be some kind of a foreign influence coming in the home you might feel also a desire to maybe bring um you know, foreign cultures into your home decoration or maybe get a car or vehicle that is somehow exotic during this time. This is just like a fun fact. And but at the same time, you might actually be tending towards downsizing or minimalizing your home environment. You are probably not going to want too much clutter or, um, you know, too much stuff around and instead, you're going to opt for simplicity when it comes to how you want your home environment to be. And also, you might feel drawn to um, getting, you know, a lot of things that involve fire and smoke in the home, like incense, incense, basically, or cigars or something. And you might feel the need to just place them in obvious places where they decorate your your living space. <clears throat> Because Jupiter is aspecting the fifth house and also the seventh, I was actually going to say this, but especially for those of you who maybe also have reinforcing themes connected to the 11th house when it comes to how you're going to meet your future spouse, this is going to be a great time to meet a potential long-term partner. Um, and irrespective, actually, this is a good time to go dating, to meet someone, especially if you are a woman, but not only, okay? Okay. 
especially if you're a woman or a gay man and you identify more as feminine because Jupiter is more the husband archetype and there's definitely this uh, you know benevolent influence with respect to dating you're going to be you're going to have maybe more opportunities to go on dates and you're going to be more open to romance and since both Jupiter and Saturn are aspect in the seventh for those of you who already have been in a relationship for some time this is a great time to actually get married or to take the relationship to a next level of commitment. This is a great time for those of you who have a partnership-based business or you're working in any kind of field that has to do with working in one-on-one -on -one situations like being a consultant or um, a counselor or any any kind of like any kind of position where you have to deal with people in one-on-one -on -one situations and positions and lines of work where diplomacy is very important and and uh, communicating with an audience is also quite important. You're going to be favored during this time. This is basically a time when actually the... So this is really... There could be some kind of a major transformation happening in with respect to the seventh house. So the seventh house can mean multiple things. It's also connected to the um, status and the, the social status and the career because it is the tenth from the tenth house. It's that Bhavad Bhavam uh, concept in Vedic astrology. So both the the seventh is basically like a higher octave. Remember, if you come from tropical astrology background, you may have heard that. Um, that syntax before of higher octave or octane, I think it was octave, but basically like a, it's like a more refined expression of the 10th house, if you will. And because you have um, the influence of the 8th house here, the 8th house ruler, there could be some kind of a transformation, in, a transformation happening. So this could be either for the better or for the worse. Since Jupiter is in a good placement, most likely it's going to be for the better. But I would still caution you not to take any unnecessary risks because with respect to your work environment or your reputation, you could be the target of some kind of a scandal or gossip or, you know, anything that has to do with a secret being revealed that might affect you, might affect your reputation and your career somehow. And so be careful not to be the target of a scandal. That's what, that's all I'm saying, right? Um, and another thing, another interesting thing is for some of you, and this is quite specific, you might turn a friend into a romantic partner or you might start a business with a friend. A partnership based business and if you have considered doing either of these things this is a good time to do it and let me see definitely a great time to get married okay for those of you who have considered getting married or you're already in a relationship and the only reason I stress this if you are already in a relationship is because I just think it's unlikely that people are going to get married if they just meet and they're going to get married in, in, I don't know, four months. But it has happened, so I guess why not? Um, so that's why I mainly mention if you're already in a relationship, this is a good time to get married. But it's generally a good time to get married. And another thing is... Yeah, this is a great time for anyone who actually has a business. You might see an increase in your um, income, in the number of clients that you have in your popularity. But it, it's also something where you have to make the most of it, right? It's not just going to happen by itself without any effort on your part. With respect to Saturn being in the 10th, this is a year where you're still going to have to really work hard towards your goals professionally. And when it comes to your goals, the, you're going to see slow and steady progress. So you need to maintain your patience. You need to maintain your dedication towards your plans when it comes to your career. Because Saturn wants, you know, thoroughness. 
attention to detail, planning, time management, right? So Saturn is not going to let you get off easy. What I'm, that's what I'm trying to say. So uh, you can achieve things, but you have to think of it in terms of everything is on you, right? You Saturn being there is kind of like a, a bittersweet situation where on the one hand, you are being given a lot of power, right? It's like, it's, it's in your control now, right? Saturn is giving you, giving you the wheel to work on your profession. And, but, so the bad news is now you are fully responsible, right? You have a lot more responsibility. Maybe not fully, um, but you have a lot more responsibility than usual because a lot less has to do with chance and a lot more has to do with your effort and your ability to commit and how dedicated you are towards your professional goals. With Saturn being in an Aquarius, this is also great for people who, you know, it's also going hand in hand with Jupiter in the 11th. It's great for people who, you know, are working with the public. Maybe people who are also in politics as well, or some kind of a position that is kind of political. It's also just good for people who are working in the corporate environment and they want to climb the ladder, right? Um, Cancer being in the sixth means you need to be careful with your health. Since um, it's also the co-ruler of the sevens, this is interesting. This could mean, for some of you more specifically, like if you are in a bad relationship, okay, this is for people who are in a bad relationship. It could be affecting your health. Um, another way to look at it is you might be seeing more arguments with your life partner during this time. I know that maybe sounds a little bit contradictory. Uh, you might get married, but not really. I mean, if you think about it, marriage doesn't have much to do. But, um, you know, during this time, actually throughout this entire time when Keto is in your sixth, um, you might see more bickering, more um more irritability in your interactions with your spouse. So I'm telling you this so that you are aware of it, so that you avoid, you know, adding fuel to the fire, right? If you try to be diplomatic, try to also maybe talk to your partner and say, if they are open to it, right, and say that, hey, you're we're going through this transit and it's going to make us fight more than usual, so let's not get you know, in let's not say things that we're going to regret later down the line, right? Um, <laughs> so these are some things to take into account. Let me check one more time. So you could, with respect to transformation, you could actually be transforming any of these areas of life that Jupiter touches during this time. You know, the 11th, the 3rd, the fifth, the seventh. Since the third is also the um, house connected to, it's connected to publishing, it's connected to entrepreneurial spirit, right? And you also have the fifth being aspected and the seventh. So this is a great time to take on new projects, to start new projects. And this is also a great time if you have been considering um publishing getting into publishing because you have that third house influence getting into maybe the musical industry or anything that has to do with a lot of communication teaching again uh is potentially favored especially since you also have the fifth house aspect in this is also last but not least this is a good time for you to just enjoy yourself because that fifth house is being aspected by jupiter so you're going to have more opportunities for just enjoyment, having fun, uh, focusing on your hobbies, getting it, getting in touch with doing things just because you enjoy doing them without considering, you know, monetary gain or stuff like that. So you also might have more opportunities than usual to travel, especially short term or short distance travel. And this is also a good time, last but not least, to... For those of you who are trying to have kids, it's a good time to try to have kids. And for those of you who do have kids, it's going to be a good time. Gonna, a good time, good relations with the kids. And 
this is also a good time. That's what I was going to say for people who are going to start a new study program or look to educate themselves, especially if it's a field that they're very passionate about, right? So not things that you have to do because your company is telling you you have to do them, but things you're really interested in. So this is a good time if you want to go to college or, you know, go to a master's degree. I would say master's degree and below, like college, maybe finish high school for those of you uh, who are still in high school, right? So this is a good time for education as well and also teaching. You're going to be very well seen if you're a teacher, actually. So it's going to add even more to your popularity. So this is what I was going to say. <clears throat> but also another thing I wanted to say with K2 and the 6th, you need to be take care of your health because K2 there could show um, things that are mysterious in nature. You know, things where... So don't ignore anything. That's what I was going to say. Don't ignore, like, if you feel sick, don't think, oh, it's going to go away by itself because you don't know that. And, you know, so if, if you start to feel sick and you think you can't really tell where this is coming from, don't just ignore it. Go and get it, get it investigated. It also means you need to be careful, right? Don't take any risks when it comes to infections, Wear a mask in crowded places, even if necessary, right? It's like better to be safe than sorry. And this is throughout the time when K2 is going to be in the sixth. This is also just a time when you might find yourself, um, you might find yourself losing interest in your daily routines, maybe even your job. And that's not a good thing because right? It could, first of all, that in itself could negatively impact your health. If you don't take your routine seriously, or you never exercise, or you neglect rest and and all that stuff, right? So the way to kind of deal with this is to kind of remind yourself to not be escapist and stay on track. And also what would really help you is to pick up a spiritual practice, like a daily meditation that will help to keep you on track and at the very least you know even praying right for those of you who are more religiously oriented praying meditating you know chanting anything like that is going to help with your uh you know health overall mentally and emotionally and also physically and to help keep you on track right so this is pretty much what i had to say about the chart one phase and i'm going to move on to the chart two in a bit So chart two phase, this is when Jupiter is going to move in with Rahu in the 12th house. So this is kind of like a, mostly it's a good news situation. And there's still kind of a risk for some of you that there could be unexpected job loss here because you still have the ruler of um, the 11th, sorry, the 10th, the co-ruler of the 10th falling into the 12th. Uh, but because Jupiter is there, this might turn into a win situation. Like I can think of situations, for instance, where people lose a job and they get a nice compensation um, financially, right? Like you can get like two, three salaries because they had to downsize your company or something like they have to end your contract. Um, or again, this is a great time for people who are planning their retirement. This is a good time to retire. And also, this is actually a good time. This is a great time for people who want to teach, get a job in teaching, get a job in um, anything to do with 12th house. Also, similarly to the phase one um, description. So this is a great time to get a job in, let's say, hospitals, even things like uh, rehab centers, prisons, asylums, places of isolation, basically. Um, 
or research or anything that has to do to a lesser extent research but anything that has to do with uh, learning about the subconscious things that are esoteric things that are um you know intuitive so even things like astrology tarot stuff like that or alternative methods of doing things right everything that is kind of like um new age basically and this is also a great time for people who want to get a job teaching especially if you want to get a job teaching abroad um to far away places and this is also simultaneously for many people going to be you know opportunities of of jobs right if you're looking for a job or if you have your own business even this is going to be a time when you might see an increase of your reputation of your status of your income of opportunities overall right you're going to have a lot of opportunities and especially coming from foreign places or far away lands or and or actually could come from uh, religious things, religious institutions or spiritual people. So basically, this is a great time to work on your career, to work on consolidating your career and settling, starting a new path, starting a new opportunity, transforming something to do with your career as well. And it's also a good time to i mean it is a good time for your career but you still need to work right so because you still have that saturn energy in the 10th house and well saturn is also the co-ruler of the 10th house sitting in the 10th this shows that there is mostly going to be positive influence on the career during this time but it will largely depend on your efforts. So it will be basically directly proportional to how much effort you are willing to put in to your goals and your progress and how serious you are, how committed you are, how disciplined you are, and all that stuff. So the, all the things that I said in the chart one phase with respect to Saturn still stand, right? Saturn there is going to test you to the max. Um, it's going to test your willpower, your endurance, your ability to plan and manage your time and your resources. So the bottom line is that you're you're going to have to work hard if you want to get results. And um, and again, you're also favored if you want to get work in administrative positions and also things that have to do with finance. But also, I would say, especially things that have to do with teaching, you know, consulting, stuff like that. And, of course, can also be legal system and it can also be publishing. But I'm definitely seeing a lot of opportunities coming from foreign lands during this time. Either from, like, yes, from foreign lands, but some of them might actually require you to move abroad at least temporarily so now you have jupiter aspecting the fourth the sixth and the eighth houses so mm, this is uh really interesting because you have the ruler of the eighth aspecting the eighth. So this is actually a great time to do away with debt. So you might get some opportunities with respect to your finances. Like, I don't know, this is a good time to refinance something, like refinance a mortgage plan or sell something. Uh, you might, you know, get you might make a profit out of selling things, selling your assets or something, or, you know, any kind of financial stuff that you might, selling your crypto, I don't know, like any kind of investments that you have made, right? They might give you fruit if you want to sell them, especially. But this is also a good time to get a bank loan if you have been seeking to get one. This is also a good time 
with respect to your relationship to your husband or wife's family of origin. I mean, your spouse's family of origin, right? They're going to be good relations with the family of origin. There's also going to be improvement. Uh, this is actually an even stronger influence that something might go wrong in your home. And I'm sorry to be the bringer of bad news. But look, it doesn't it doesn't hurt to be cautious, right? With respect to your home. Like I said, if you I'm not talking about unexpected situations. I mean, if unexpected situations will happen, they will happen, right? The best thing you can do is make sure that you have enough money saved to take care of them, like take care of your car breaking down or needing a plumber or something like that because I think the chances are even higher during this time actually that something might go wrong in your home unexpectedly and you're going to need to fix it and uh, best case scenario for some of you this is a great time to renovate or do something like change you know how should I <clears throat> how should I put it <coughs> I have to pause so back I had to cough a bit. So you have, going back to the idea that there's a lot of potentially trouble, troublesome aspects on the fourth house. So there could be problems connected to the household or the vehicles and, and or there could be something connected to your mother or the mother's side of the family. You might find that, I mean, overall, because Jupiter is there with respect to the relationship to your mother, most likely it's going to be a positive thing. A positive relationship, I mean. And of course, for it's a great time for people who want to buy a home during this time. Um, and also, now you have Jupiter aspecting also the sixth house. So this is actually a good time to heal any kind of health problems you might have. And uh, also when it comes to the issue of potentially arguing with the spouse or the long-term partner that existed in the chart one phase, during this time, it's definitely going to get better, as in less chances of arguments. And of course, since the sixth house is also employment, uh, this is going to be a good time to get a job. You're going to have more opportunities to get a job, especially for those of you who are seeking to get a job as opposed to, um, I don't know, getting more business, right? And oh, let me see another thing. <clears throat> With respect to your profession, you're going to have more dealings with audiences than usual, maybe. Like, you might be put in positions where you have to communicate a lot. This goes hand in hand with the idea that it's a good time for people who want to get into teaching. So I would say probably, especially if you get into that line of work, you're going to have to deal with people in one-on-one -on -one situations a lot more, you know, learn how to present yourself in front of a public, etc. So... But this is like, um, like I, I said in the first chart phase, this chart, I mean, similarly to what I said in the chart one phase, in this phase, this is a good time to transform any of the areas that Jupiter touches as well. So um, the 12th house, the 4th house, the 6th house, the 8th house. So this means you can transform your debts, you know, anything to do with your finances, especially joint assets. So if you have a you know joint investments joint bank accounts with us with your spouse that sector is somehow going to be affected i mean it could be affected if you put your efforts into it to for the better right i mean i don't know like i said refinancing stuff like that if you have debt um 
with respect to the fourth house, this shows that there could be some transformation happening with respect to your home, vehicle, maybe getting a new home even. I would say not so much actually getting a new place for most of you. Um, I would say it's more like you're going to be seeking to transform something about your home, your vehicle, I don't know, paint your apartment at the very least. But like I said, this could also show that there might be sudden changes that you didn't plan for with respect to these to to these areas but with respect to your home in particular it could be particularly damaging <clears throat> with respect to your sixth house there could be a like there could be a transformation with respect to your health so it's up to you whether it's for the better or for the worse but most likely it will be for the better with this combination And with the 8th house, you know, joint assets, like I said, right? 12th house is debts, 8th house is joint assets, finances, mortgages, stuff like that. Anything that goes through a bank is the 8th house. So this is pretty much what I can say with respect to the second chart phase. And moving on to the chart 3 phase. So the chart three phase is only for about roughly the last month of 2023. And the main difference is uh, Rahu will be moving into Pisces. Which is quite the change. So Rahu moving into the 11th house for you. This is a time when you're going to feel an increased desire to... Um, First of all, to connect with large audiences of people, you might actually feel drawn to applying for higher positions in your profession, especially if you work in a corporate environment. This is a good time actually to get a promotion and to be put in positions where you have more dealings with a lot more people. So any kind of managerial position, administrative position this is a good time for that. And it's also, you're going to feel a strong desire to connect with a lot of people, to connect with your friends, and also with older siblings if you have them. There could be also potential, but at the same time, this is the kind of like a double-edged sword with uh, Rahu. Um, because it's like, on the one hand, it can increase interactions and a desire to socialize and, and opportunities to socialize. You might have a lot of contacts, actually, during this time with people from foreign cultures. And, and, or, this could also be a time when you might deal with people who are potentially two-faced, deceptive, uh, you know, might try to, you know, uh, people who are... Yeah, parvenites, basically, you know, um, who only care about appearances, basically narcissists. Now, obviously, it doesn't have to be that, but it doesn't hurt to be cautious about it and be aware of it, that you might attract people that are, you know, sneaky, two-faced, deceptive, stuff like that. And, of course, you yourself might become the person who is a little bit sneaky, a little bit more deceptive than usual with respect to your um, friends and maybe in your profession as well. So, yeah, watch out for that because it might damage your reputation. Jupiter stays in the 12th house, which is good. Basically, everything that I said with respect to Jupiter in the chart 2 phase stands. So, it's still a good time for you to transform all of, all of these areas that Jupiter touches. The 12th, the 4th, the 6th, and the 8th house. And it's also, with respect to the 8th house, this is probably the best time for things that have to do with finances and especially joint assets with your spouse, especially things like debts, mortgages, you know, anything to do with finances. And also, this is the best time uh, with respect to your relationship with the spouse's family of origin. There will be good connections with the spouse's family of origin. 
there might be some kind of gains happening, actually. And this is something that just uh, occurred to me. So this is also true for the char 2 phase. There might be some gains coming from the families, um, from your spouse's family of origin. Some opportunities, maybe for work, or somehow they're going to help you with your finances. Could be a multitude of things. During this time, you might... So, your relationship with your spouse is going to be serious, but... I mean, it's mostly going to be stable, actually, but it also might have this really serious tone to it. So, there's going to be, like, less time for, let's say, fun and games and lovey-dovey stuff. And somehow, and also, you you might have some issues with your partner because you work too much or you're overly focused on your career or they're overly focused on their career. Uh, but most likely it's because of your career. <clears throat> because you have K2 in the fifth house. So this is a time when you're going to be losing interest in a lot of your hobbies and the things that normally would make you happy. Um, you might find that you spend less time, you know, having fun or focusing on romance or your kids. You might neglect your kids, so be careful about that if that turns out to be a thing. Um, but this is a time when you're basically everything fifth house is going to go into the background of your existence as long as K2 stays in the fifth and Rahu stays in the eleventh or in Pisces. Right, this is going to be... A, you're going to be, probably because you're going to be so much more focused on your professional life. <clears throat> this is still a good time for you to get married, especially if you also have placements in your horoscope that suggest marrying a foreigner. Having a foreign spouse archetype. So it depends a lot on the individual um, chart. This is, yeah, I mean, Saturn is going to basically staying in Aquarius throughout this entire year. This whole year is a good time for you to work on your career and slowly and steadily increase your reputation, your income, and everything to do with your career. And everything that I said with respect to Saturn still stands, which means you still have to work hard, right? But the good news is with Saturn in the 10th, there are not going to be any huge sudden changes unless you are in a completely wrong career path right and I think I also mentioned this maybe in the uh, last year's predictions that when Saturn hits the 10th house it's like it's a bittersweet thing right because um if you are in a really bad career path right or you haven't been doing a good job it, it, it can show job loss basically but ultimately, everything is going to be for the better because Saturn just seeks to bring you back to reality, to bring you back to, you know, what is good for you on a sustainable level. So if you have been in a completely wrong career path, Saturn is going to demolish that, you know. So this is also maybe why some of you might have job loss, like I said, in the, I think, in the chart one phase. But... Ultimately, everything that Saturn is going to rebuild is going to be better and thorough and more in line with who you really are. So if you really do your work during this year and with Saturn there, like I said, you're being placed at the at the what was the word? I think the helm, right? You're being placed at, as the leader. You're the one who's in charge of your career during this time. So it's up to you it, 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 and your success and your progress with respect to your career, your status, and even your finances, the ones that come from your profession directly, depend on how much effort you're willing to put in, how organized you're going to be, how little you are going to leave to chance because Saturn is not going to want you to leave anything to chance. chance. As long as Saturn is there, you're not going to get any special help basically. So think about it as if you are alone and you need to do stuff yourself, right? 
Um, <laughs> like, which doesn't mean you have to completely destroy your faith in a higher power, but you need to to think that as long as Saturn is there in the 10th house, you are the one who has to do the work that has to do with your career, right? So if things go wrong, things go wrong, most likely it's because of something you have done wrong, either immediately in the present or because of some things you have done wrong in the past and now the day of reckoning is coming, right? Because uh, Saturn is also connected to karma and all that stuff. <clears throat> Mostly, though, I would say this is just, it's a good phase, continuing with the Char 2 phase as well. But the Char 2 is still the best, I would say, right? This phase is probably going to continue a while into the next year, by the way. So, yes. What else? Let me see if I can check anything else. Oh, this is a great time for people who want to start their own business, their side hustle, or a side hustle at the very least, because you have the ruler of the 10th aspect in the third house. And you're going to be favored in communication, dealing with audiences. So this is kind of like a continuation of the chart two phase and what I said there as well. So you're still going to be favored when it comes to communication, but you're going to be especially favored when it comes to dealing with foreigners during this phase. And this is also a great time this is even better with your health, right? So you see in the chart two phase where Jupiter touched the sixth house, that was a good time to work on your healing. This is an even better part. This is an even better uh, phase to work on your healing. And most likely you're going to get even closer to healing from any medical problems or even be completely healed during this time, right? But of course, it still implies that you do the work and the investigations and everything, right? So this is one of the best things. And also, since you have um, Jupiter aspect in the sixth, this is a great time to, you know, rethink your daily routines, maybe work on being healthier in general. And also, it's a good time to get a pet if you have considered getting a pet. And if you have a pet, it's going to be a good time with respect to, you know, your pet and how the relationship with the pet is going to go. I know people think that, I don't know, that that doesn't count, but I don't agree with it. Like, pets are living beings, and of course, they do affect us like everything else we come into contact with. Um, and there have been studies upon studies that show having a pet, you know, can help you a lot with respect to your health, emotionally, mentally, and also physically, ultimately. So this is a good time to get a pet if you have considered getting one this is a good time and if your pet has had any kind of health problems this is also a good time when the pet problems are gonna be over basically so yes this is pretty much what i can say with respect to the charter three phase and this has been it and you ha if you have enjoyed it please don't forget to like the video and subscribe to my channel and comment in the comment section with any feedback you would like to give and of course, you can come back throughout the entire year and keep me posted <laughs> with respect to how it progresses. Um, and also, if you're interested in a personal consultation, you can email me at the email address that I will leave in the video description. And I can email you back with a pricing list and further details. Thank you.